What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Make sure you guys subscribe to my channel as I will be posting videos, new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. You don't wanna miss these videos, so please subscribe. What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Today, I wanna to talk about how I got into med school. Everybody has their their story, their path of how to a certain point. Um, and it may not always be from point A to point B to point C. You may have to go to from point A to point D, then point D to point C, then C to B, then, and then get to that, that point eventually. But my path is a little bit unique. Um, right out of high school, um, I, me and my best friend, we both said that we wanted to go to medical school. He wanted to go to college. I wanted to actually start making money. So I went into the military at age 17 and did eight years in the military. Went to Iraq in 2005. And then I went to college while I was on active duty. So I went to nighttime school. I went to weekend school. I took internet courses. I went to about six different schools actually just to complete all my components of my degree and also the prereqs for medical school. So it took me a total of seven years to get my college degree. If you compare this to my best friend who went from high school, he went directly to college, he went directly to medical school and he took that path. And then after medical school, he went into the military to have them pay for his medical school loans. So. It, it's funny that it's just the opposite of what I did. Instead of high school, military, uh, get out of the military, didn't go to medical school. He went from high school, college, medical school, into the military. So, and then we ended up in the same city. He's stationed here in San Antonio, Texas. He's a cardiothoracic anesthesiologist and he's active duty Air Force and I'm out of the Air Force now. So it's funny how life works. That just shows you that there is no one set path to get into a particular point. And for medical school, everybody has a unique story. There's a gentleman that I work with. He's a, he was a former PA. Now he's an MD. One of my good friends was a professional soccer player. Now he's an MD. There's a gentleman at Harvard, a uh, neurosurgery uh, intern. He was a uh, NFL athlete. There was an applicant who interviewed for our program, orthopedic surgery. He played football for the Packers, NFL athlete, and now he's a uh, ortho intern at the Mayo Clinic. So everybody has their unique kind of path uh, to get to a certain point. But for me, um, while I was in the military, I went to school at nighttime, weekends, so I was working full time in the military and it was kind of challenging to do the requirements for medical school to complete my degree because I would go to work at, you know, 7 p.m. at night, get off at 7 a.m. in the morning, and then I would go to school from 8 to 12 and then sleep from 1 to 5 and then do it all over again. I did that for seven years. Um, so that took a really a toll on my grades and on my scores because I, I felt like I wasn't able to get a formal education. I was going sporadically. I had to drop classes when I went to Iraq. When the military called, I had to basically put, stop everything that I was doing and be all about the military. So I didn't feel like I got the kind of the best education that way. It was very disjointed and very um, uh, fragmented. Um, in my studies. So my GPA suffered and my MCAT score suffered because of so. So what I had to do when I applied to medical school my first time and I applied to all these schools and I thought that everything that I went through would hold weight and help me out to get in medical school, it actually did not. I actually was rejected my first two times of applying. So when I contacted the schools to say, hey, what can I do to strengthen my application to get into your program? They all told me the same thing. I actually had a program in Arizona where I interviewed at for medical school. They actually came and they, um, they came and they met with me in San Antonio. They sent a rep representative to talk more about my file. 
And what they concluded was that the um, what I needed to work on was my GPA and my MCAT score. So here I am with a college degree out of the military, applying to medical school. I had quit my job uh, just so I can focus on the MCAT and I'm getting rejection letter after rejection letter after rejection letter. So what I decided what was best for me and based off of all this input that I received was to do a graduate program to strengthen my application. And I did a Georgetown uh, graduate program called the GEMS program, the Georgetown Experimental Medical Program. And it's a program for disadvantaged students who um, to strengthen your application for medical school. They have a master's program there as well. It's called the SMP program. And there are lots of other programs around the country that have post back programs. I did that program as a year program. It was extremely hard. We took classes with the medical students. We took graduate classes like biochemistry, cellular biology. We took anatomy and physiology. We took renal. We took uh, cardiovascular, respiratory, uh, and GI. And all of these, um, all of these classes, they basically want to see if you can handle the rigors of medical school. So I worked my butt off that year and I actually did really well and got accepted to medical school. I will put my uh, acceptance letter right up here. But um, that day was a very uh, undescribable day because I was so excited. Everything that I had worked up to that point, it was just in an email one little small email kind of summed up all those years of work so I got into medical school by doing a post back program there are lots of them out there. there's one at Drexel there's one at Georgetown and these are kind of direct access to the administration you meet people you network and you show them like hey I really want to be here um, I can handle medical school because all they look all they're looking at is your GPA your MCAT score and they're, they're deciding off of that so if you are struggling to get into medical school consider a post back program or a master's program to strengthen your application this will tell the admissions committee like hey I can handle medical school just give me opportunity and that's all I needed was opportunity to show someone that I can handle it and I actually did extremely well in medical school got into a top specialty orthopedic surgery uh, at my number one choice of residency because in graduate and um, undergrad I didn't know that um, I didn't really take it that serious I was studying here and there but I didn't know that I would need to take use that information on the MCAT until my last year of college I was actually talking to one of my classmates and he was saying that hey, I'm applying to medical school. I was like, what? You already applied? I thought people apply after you graduate. He had already taken the MCAT, already applied, and got accepted into, I uh, had an interview. So I didn't know about the MCAT until after uh, my, my senior year of college. That's why I'm so passionate about helping you guys out because things that I didn't know along the way. First is medical school. I knew exactly from day one that I needed to know that information for the exam. So I studied my butt off, I worked extremely hard, and I knew that day was coming where I would take step one versus the MCAT I knew nothing about. So the MCAT is not a predictor of success in medical school because um, it just didn't, there's been studies that show that it doesn't predict how well you will do. So the tests and the exams and the boards were actually a lot easier to me because I knew exactly what I needed to study. So I wanted to make this video to show you guys there are lots of different routes to get into medical school. This is the way I got in. Um, but if you guys have any more questions, email me at overcomingtheoddsbook at gmail.com or contact me on my website, antoniawebmd.com. We'll see you next time.